Hey everybody, this is Tim, the Boone County Beekeeper. I'd like to welcome you back to another episode. Uh, today I want to talk just for a second about swarm traps. And this is not going to be an actual build video, but I do want to give you some dimensions, uh, some things that, that I've learned. And you know, Mike Barry says it's the best. Uh, he always says in every one of his videos, he says this is not a how-to video. This is how I do it, and that, I want to steal his line because that's the way that I feel. I'm not an expert, okay, but uh, we've had some really good success with this design. Uh, they're very easy to make. I'm not going to bore you with the, watching me saw and cut and hammer and all that. So uh, I want to give you some dimensions real quick. Uh, but before I do, I want to talk a little bit about swarms. Uh, you know, why does bees swarm? Well, you know, as the... You get into summer, uh, you got the longest day of the year is Ju June the 21st. And from that day on up till December uh, 21st, the days are getting shorter, uh, only like a minute a day or so. But as summer goes along, you know, the days are getting shorter and those bees, what she'll do, that queen, she'll start slacking down on her brood laying. And uh, she will get down there, <sighs> September October time frame she gets that colony down to a pretty manageable level uh, she will produce what we call winter bees and that's October time frame uh, what's the difference you know these videos are geared towards people that has never had bees don't really know the difference so I know that I'm saying a lot that people probably already know you know a, a summer bee the ones that live through the summer, they are probably, they live roughly 40 days. Uh, first couple weeks of their life, they're working inside of the, uh, the colony. And the last couple, three weeks of their life, they're out foraging, they're out uh, getting pollen, they're getting nectar, and then they die. Like 40 days, that's the life of a bee. Now a winter bee, the ones that's born in like October, they live a little longer. They live a few months. They'll live to get those bees and the queen through the winter time. So that is their main job, to stay clustered in their tight around that queen, around whatever brood that she might have in the winter, and to keep all of that warm. That is their main job. And they're not out flying. They're not as active. And they're a slightly bigger bee, so they will live just a little bit longer. And that's your winter bees. Now, after December the 21st, which is the winter sol solstice, uh, they sense that these days are starting to get a little bit longer. And I know it's only like a minute, but they sense this. Uh, they know this. And as time goes on up in the gym, them days are getting a little longer. She will actually, she will start laying a little more brood. And... As time goes on, she'll lay more brood and more brood. And finally, you have got a pretty good box full of bees there. And the swarming, what they do is when they get in the spring, uh, everything's coming in, pollen's coming in, nectar's coming in, starting to come in. And they look around and they think, man, we do not have any place to put all this stuff with all these bees in here. So... What they will do, they'll start preparing for swarm. Uh, they'll go down on the bottom, and we'll talk about that later. They'll put swarm cells. Uh, you've got to really check for those. They'll go down there. They'll they'll build swarm cells. The, the queen, she will start getting herself down in weight just a little bit so she'll be able to fly. Uh, in the meantime, you have these bees that go out. They are called scout bees. And these scout bees are, are looking for a new home for that queen and about half the colony. And what happens, they'll go and they'll, they'll fly all around. They'll go inside and they look and they like to, to see what kind of a smell is in there. Has it had bees in there before? Uh, is it watertight? Does the sun hit it good? Uh, just different things. The big thing is is size, you know, and, and all the books that I have read and everything I've watched, they like about a 40 liter to 50 liter. That's the size trap that they like. Uh, that is, seems to be like the, the perfect space 
for a swarm about 40 to 50 liters now this box right here these boxes these are about 40 odd liters is what they are and so um, let's talk about them just a little bit uh, they're easy to build like I said in the last video if you can build a box you can build a swarm trap so I want to show you a few things here um, first thing you'll do you want to I use one by lumber and and when I say one by lumber let me say this for anybody that, that don't really know when I say one by lumber this is a finished board so a finished one inch board is not really one inch it's been dried it's been planed down they are actually three quarters of an inch thick uh, so when I say one by it's three quarter inches thick and and all my my boxes everything I, that's what I built out of was one inch lumber three quarter inch thick so what you want to do is you want to cut two pieces first thing you want to cut two pieces at 18 inches uh, long you want to cut them seven and a half inches wide and I, I'll put all these dimensions down in the uh, down in the description now on one of those 18 inch long boards come down about five inches from the top drill your hole it don't matter what size I think this is like one and five eighths or something drill your hole that's gonna be for ventilation I'll show you that in a minute then the next one is you want to cut one that's seven and a half inches wide and 19 and seven eighths long right in the center drill your another hole uh, again ventilation now you can put this together any way you want but I use pocket screws is what I like to use and glue uh, so you lay this long one down and you want to put these right here on the sides now what you want to do is you want to come on top of this board so from this wall to this wall should be 19 and 7 eighths uh, that, that's the dimension 19 and 7 eighths and then you can use anything on the side um, I've used quarter inch I've used half inch I've used three quarter inch and I'm gonna tell you when you get three quarter inch plywood up in a tree it is heavy okay so I've been using this shore ply which is at Lowe's it's really thin uh, it's thinner than a quarter of an inch it's kind of like paneling material but I like it for a lot of reasons one is I like because it it's light uh, it is really light uh, but you want to cut your two pieces of that and let me look here you want them to be 19 and 7 8 wide and tall you want them to be 19 and 1 half inch okay so somebody said why do you want to cut that at 19 and a half and your sides are 18 well I cut me two boards right here seven and a half inches and about three inches here and then you want to bring that up, if you can see in there, to the top of that. So that way you've got this flush all the way around. And that, what that does, that gives you a place to put your frames right there like that. So you've got a front and a back. You put that on. Now what you want to do, you want to come over here. Depending on what size, of, you want to come over about three inches. And I, I think you can see this one maybe better. Turn that around over about three inches from the right hand side looking at the box and about three inches up drill you two one inch holes right here and make a figure eight out of it and what you want to do if you're using half inch to three quarter inch, put you a nail a finishing nail in each one of those holes that'll choke down some birds mice things like that can't get into it where I use this thin stuff what I do is I put one by stuff around here, cut about three quarter inches, and I just come around and cover that hole, and then I put my finishing nails down in here, just across there to keep birds, mice, all that out. Then the only thing you really have to do other than that is build you a lid. Uh, pretty simple. Uh, I just I cut two pieces. Uh, let's see, I cut two pieces at uh, 22 and then I cut two at ten and a quarter and that gives me a little bit of room put, cut you a piece for the top put it on there. and what I do as you can see is I put uh, metal I've got uh, flashing that I've, I've been and I put on there just to to keep if you're not gonna put flashing on just be sure to paint that real good paint everything a couple good coats uh, because they will you know they'll rot so but uh, that seems to help now 
on these right here where this stuff here is so thin I'm going to show you this and this is so thin what I do is I come off with just a couple strips on each side and I actually anchor these strips uh, to the one by material so all the pressure all the weight is on the one by material I let it stick out two to three inches right here on the back then I just join it across now I like that and I'll show you why. Uh, one, you know, these boxes are a lot lighter. Cut you a board to hang it with. Uh, it can be as long as you want it. Drill you a hole to, to, to one inch, two inch, whatever. That's to put a nail in a tree, hang that on. That way you can hang it there and you can strap it down. You don't have to zip and try to hold it. You know, that'll hold. But I like to, to anchor this board to these strips right here. And what that will do that gives me you can see back here plenty of room so when i get that up i can put a wedge here to get that good and straight get it level and then i have room to go right through here put me a ratchet strap and just ratchet that right onto the tree and it, it really works good it really does so that's about all that I really do on that, I mean, it's pretty easy. Now, you see my buddy, that's Teddy down there. I don't know if you can see my dog or not, but he, he's always right here with me. Uh, so, but that's basically it. Uh, like I said, if you can build a box, you can build a swarm trap. Nothing fancy. I mean, I've seen people catch them in all kind of crazy things. And, man, I've got something that looks pretty rough. I really do. Uh, around here we have a lot of bears uh, i've got one that's sitting over here behind you bears have been scratching and, and chewing on it so i'm going to have to do some more painting and then do a little more uh waterproofing on it i guess so but on the next video we want to go we want to hang them uh, we want to go start baiting them we'll talk we'll get into it in detail we'll go we'll hang them we'll bait them i'll show, show you how i do it uh what you know i use swarm commander how much i put in how i do it you know all that and i want to talk a little bit also on the next video about frames uh frames is very important um people have been asking me a little bit about frames so we want to get into that on the next video as well uh but really that's about all i got today and uh, short but sweet but uh you know these videos i, I know you, you probably know all this stuff that i'm saying but these videos are geared uh, for the people you know that wants to have bees has never been around a bee I'll be honest. Uh, a couple of years ago, I didn't know all this. I didn't. I didn't have a clue about a swarm trap and, and the dimensions and all that. I didn't know. Now, the only other thing I will say is on those vent holes, uh, like on the side right here. You see what I do on the side and on the bottom where that vent hole is at. I'll get a piece of number eight. It's got to be number eight hardware cloth. And I go staple that on the inside. And what that does is that lets air flow up through the bottom and out right here. And that just that gives a little circulation of air. Uh, it gets hot in that box. But uh, as it's today, you can see it's uh, March the 29th. Got my coat on. It's colder. It's been a cold week. Actually snowed this past weekend. Craziest winter I've ever seen. Uh, I'm honest. And let me say one more thing before I go. Uh, I actually lied to you last week didn't mean to uh, didn't know that I was lying but you know I had a couple hives out back here and I told you that everything made it through the winter well I learned it didn't uh, I actually had one that I did lose uh, and I think I know what happened uh, comment if you want to see if you think I'm right well, I'll tell you what happened. Uh, I know my mite count was good. I mean, I treated, I treated them really good in the spring and also in the fall. Uh, my, my mite count was low. They had plenty of stores. I had them a, a super full of honey. I had the mountain camp method on top. They didn't hardly touch any of that. I actually got in my hives uh, this week. They didn't touch it, and uh, the other one ate it all. But I know what happened, I believe, and see if you think this makes sense. Uh, the one hive that I lost back in August of last year, something happened to that queen. Uh, she died, and you know I caught her in a swarm. Don't know how old she was, but she died. So they had to make them a new queen, and that's a kind of a tough time of year to do it. But she, 
she did she 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 come through she uh she she went she had her flight uh she you know she made it back uh, she laid a little bit of drone brood there to start with and then she started laying some brood now but by that time it was up in september and it was starting to get cool here and i think what happened was they went into winter light i think there was just not enough bees to make it through the winter now they made it a long time like i said you know last video uh winter was crazy november december was warm uh but man december uh when it rolled around there the 31st it's like you just set your 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 calendar to it when it hit the first of the year it just it got blue cold and we've had some really yucky weather and i just don't think that we had enough bees in there to make it through uh, for whatever reason they eat you know in the bottom they didn't move up for whatever reason I don't, I don't know what that is i'm still learning you know so i don't know i don't know why they didn't but learning experience so we'll have to get you another swarm and get it out here in this box uh, that's what i'm gonna, I'm gonna split this hive and i'm gonna take it up to the other bee yard uh, I hate that I lost that queen because she was she was a she was a brood machine, and they was real gentle bees. These ones I got left, they're mean. <laughs> I don't care to they'll eat you. If they could get me on the ground, they would probably kill me. Uh, but she is a worker. I have to say, she is a worker, and she lays a lot of brood, and she's going to be a good one, I believe. So I'm going to split her and and see what happens. But that's basically all I have, you know. Uh, like some simple to make I'll link all these dimensions that I said down in the description there and uh, if you got some questions you got some comments you know let me know uh, if I don't know the answer man I got some good buddies that are real good beekeepers and uh, we'll get an answer for you we'll see what we can do so until next time this is Tim the Boone County beekeeper God bless you and I hope you and your family as well and I hope you have a good week uh, if you if you like what you see give me a like uh, hit that subscribe button uh, that that'll let this get out to the world and that's all we're trying to do just to, to help some people out that's, that's all we want to gain out just give somebody some help uh, take care see you next time bye bye